our chart of the day today is Uber. Weiss mentioned it. It's ribbon. It's up uh, almost 12 percent on the back of the investor day. Announced the first ever buyback, too. A lot of optimism here. Deirdre Bosa out in San Francisco is going to take us through what is quite a run for this stock, getting another big leg higher today. Yeah, you call it your chart of the day. It could also be your chart of the year. It has just taken off and really separated itself from Lyft. You can see here that they used to trade in tandem, but Uber has just taken off. And how did we get here? Well, it has really been transformed as a company. And Dara Khosr Shahi, the CEO, he is an operator through and through. He has listened to Wall Street. This went from being a company that lost billions of dollars a year, this growth at all costs mentality, it was literally battling its drivers and it had a brand problem to now free cash flow, more than $3 billion worth of free cash flow, consistent gap profitability, and of course, the buyback. So Dara Khosr Shahi is giving Wall Street everything that it wanted. It does beg a question, perhaps, should he? Let's take a look at the free cash flow margin, because for Uber, it's about 9%. Compare that to Airbnbs, which also announced an expanded buyback last night of $6 billion. Its average free cash flow margin for the last year was more than 40%. You also have to think about things like stock-based comp compensation, which does not get taken out of free cash flow. At Uber, that's $1.9 billion. But what it does do, Scott, is it belies a lot of confidence, right? Dara Khosr Shahi in that Investor Day update believes that free cash flow is just going to grow and grow. So maybe they will grow into this buyback. Um, but it really is sort of like a feather in his cap. It's been a long journey. This is a stock that traded below its IPO price for many, many years. And we're, he's start, certainly starting to reap the benefits of that. Everything is working. The year of efficiency, um, becoming an operator. And that's how we reach this enormous valuation for the company. I mean, you, you really underscore what the sentiment seems to be from investors, D, which, you know, we have many on the program today. But I also spoke with Altimeter's Brad Gerstner earlier on the move today and the announcements and really exactly what you're hitting on. He told me, quote, Dara and Team Uber are firing on all cylinders along with Zuck. Of course, Mark Zuckerberg. Dara put a dagger in the age of excess. The results? Massive growth in profits, nearly tripling free cash flow to $9 billion in 2026, along with a return of capital to shareholders and improving stock-based comp, as Deirdre was just talking about. Uber is showing a blueprint for all of tech. Really, D speaks to the kind of uh, note that this company is hitting on and how much it's now resonating with investors. Yes, but let me also say that... Wall Street is one stakeholder. Another very big group of stakeholders that we should not forget here are the drivers themselves. That leads to the supply for Uber, right, and better service levels, of which it still competes on with DoorDash and Lyft. And it's important to remember that that is not really a settled story here, and it's something that pokes its head up every once in a while. There is a Valentine's Day strike today. You're having thousands of Uber and Lyft and DoorDash drivers not giving rise to airports today. And that may not cause a huge disruption. In fact, Uber says that they've seen this before and it hasn't really impacted operations. But it's important to note because that is still one big risk overhanging the company, that labor question. All of its drivers are classified as independent contractors. And like I said, every once in a while, there's this debate that emerges from lawmakers, from the drivers themselves, that maybe they should be considered employees. And the business model, the finances, doesn't work in that scenario. Yeah, no, it's a good point. You make good context. They've been able to overcome any conversation really about that for the last few years. D, thanks. Deirdre Bosa out in San Francisco. So, Jenny, I, I mentioned we've got ownership all mm -hmm. over the place today. Jenny, you want it? Right. So Deirdre really highlighted exactly where we are when she talked about how basically the company swung their, the pendulum from like not caring all about profitability or shareholders to completely caring about shareholders and profitability in 2022. And then Brad highlighted that further with him saying, and they're going to generate $6 billion of free, sorry, $9 billion of free cash flow in 2026. So where we are as a shareholder is, you know, we bought this two years ago. We're up 240 percent since we bought it. We know we're not going to get that going forward. But at $9 billion of free cash flow, it's still a 6% free cash flow yield. But then you take in what Deirdre said and about the strikes. And you really need to see them start to get closer to the line of balancing out we want to be super shareholder friendly, but we also can't cut into the bone. We can't cut into the meat of this business and we can't disenfranchise the drivers. So we need to see them start coming together on those and, and just be, be excellent operators. But I think we're at a critical time where they, you know, they're really moving into a more 
balanced and professional company um, than they had been in the past. It Weiss, was all one and then all the other. Weiss, you as well. You, you own the stock too. I do, and uh, I own it because of Dara. I mean, he's done a phenomenal job. And you know what's a great advertisement for your business to a consumer business? Is a stock price. Having every news show talk about how the company's doing so well and the stock doing so well. So that's number one. Number two, they've got a diversified business model as opposed to Lyft. And he's just turned it around. Now, it's not a riskless story. It's a large position, but not one of my largest because of the risk that Jenny points out. I think that ship has sailed already. They're not going to be full-time W-2 employees, and they shouldn't be because not, not all of them work a full day. But to me, the momentum is going to keep going. You'll see the price increases. And as long as he's there, he's mm -hmm. one of the top CEOs in the business, period. I'm going to be there, unless it gets way ahead of itself, as we see stocks tend to do in this market. Then, of course, I'll cut back or sell. Been a, been a big run. It's Josh Brown's biggest holding, as you know. Uh, by the way, he's going to be on Closing Bell uh, with me later on to discuss that. And certainly the markets. Joe has it in the Joe T and personally as well.